Hello everyone, my name is Sean. I am the Crypto Smith. Welcome back to the channel. I do appreciate you coming back. If you wouldn't mind giving me just a little like and subscribe, I would really appreciate that. It does help my channel grow. And for that, I appreciate you. Let's get straight into this one. This is just gonna be a market update and maybe a couple of updates on the Ripple SEC case and what's going on in the world at large. Basically, today is a green day. It's a good day. Don't get confused. It doesn't mean I'm bullish on crypto, and I don't think you should be either. However, this is nice to counter the down days we've had. It's nice to take a breath and think, okay, the world is not lost. Crypto is not going to zero. We're just going to fluctuate in these ranges here over the next weeks and months. Nothing has really changed in the world as a whole as far as the economic conditions out there, inflation, uh, insane high fuel rates right now, the war is still going on. So we're still in the same conditions, right? There are no fundamental differences from yesterday to today. And think about this, we still have GDP numbers coming out this month. We also have uh, the CPI, which I did read an article that said they should actually be good, but we have to wait to see. I believe that drops on the 13th of July. Let's check out the bubbles. And the bubbles look green, right? This is not horrible, like I said last time, where everything was terrible, but this is good. Every, you know, lots of things are green across the board. Ave coming out on top right now. Matic, which is one of my favorites. We're just leveling out the red days here. We're not at the bottom yet, I don't think. I do believe we still have room to go down. We still can get bad news anytime. The feds are most likely going to raise rates again this month. From what I'm seeing, it's going to be probably another very large hike, either a half point or three quarters of a point again, which is just them really taking wild stabs at correcting inflation because they waited too long. They screwed up. We printed too much money, gave away too much free money, and they waited too long to make corrections. And this is the price that we pay. So if we just look at Bitcoin, right? Because nothing else is going to move in the market. XRP is not going anywhere. Matic's not going anywhere unless Bitcoin moves. So as you can see, we're still in this $20,000 range, right? We're just ranging from uh, the 18.5 uh, to 22.5 today. So we're just ranging between 18.5 and 22.5. I don't see anything positive. I don't see a signal for a bull run until we get back way up here to 28, 29,000 and then break over 30,000. This is going to be a bit of a resistance right here, that $30,000 mark, right? Round numbers are always good resistance and or floors. That's where people are emotional. They have th those numbers in their head. I'm going to buy when it gets to this, you know, generally a round number. I'm going to sell when it gets to this, you know, 30,000, 50,000, you know, $20, whatever round numbers there are. So those are psychological floors and or ceilings for price movement. And right now, I don't really see anything that's going to tell me that we're, we're running against resistance right here because they're really, if you look back, uh, in the past, back in 2021, yeah, there were a few days in here where we kind of meandered around the uh, twenty to $23,000 range, but it, it's a few days. It doesn't really make a level. I'm only looking at this as we're going to be in this range here, and we could drop down to 15000 We could drop down to twelve. It, it We really don't know. We really, we're really we not out of the woods yet. So there is other good news. that There's a lot of experts out there who do believe that most of the liquidity that left the market uh, is already gone. And we've seen the worst of it right now. And basically what happened once everything starts to drop, you know, we, we start to see these drops in here. You get these highly over leveraged platforms and investors and they start losing their shorts, right? When these things start plummeting, it, it's a domino effect. And it took out many investors and companies like Celsius, BlockFi, Voyager. These all were highly over leveraged, didn't have the funds on hand. They suffered. Investors suffered with them. So this is just the market in general right now. Uh, today is not, not a bad day. It's not a great day, but uh, it's just one day closer to the end of the bear market. I've got a couple of updates on Ripple. Really, there isn't anything happening in the uh, uh, Ripple SEC case right now. We're all waiting for the judge to rule on the Bill Hinman emails and whether they have to be turned over to uh, Ripple's team. But I can report to you that Ripple has added two new lawyers to the team, which kind of makes us think that they're expecting this case just to drag out longer and they need some fresh blood in there, maybe some fresh ideas, or they're going to take over caseload for some current uh, lawyers who may go on vacation or, or they're going to be moved to a different case. I'm not really sure. They weren't very specific on that. Also, the SEC files a motion today to reduce Ripple's expert testimony. 
uh, they're asking the judge basically if, if they can go ahead and file this omnibus or very large big motion that is going to try to exclude or limit all of the testimony or most of the testimony of the 10 experts uh, who are hired by Ripple uh, in their defense. And Ripple says that's fine uh, as long as they get the uh, same page limit for the response and opposition. And so uh, we're assuming that that's going to go ahead and, and move forward. And we have our XRP friendly attorney, Fred Rispoli. He explains this is just highly routine. This is very normal. Uh, Ripple wants to try to strike testimony from the SEC's witnesses and the SEC wants to strike uh, testimony from Ripple's witnesses. So uh, that all seems very normal. So really, there's just not a lot of movement right now. We're waiting for this decision by the judge to determine whether she's going to tell the SEC yet for the, I think it's the fifth time that, yeah, you have to turn over Bill Hinman's emails uh, and they're going to just find another way to, uh, to try to drag that out. They're obviously going to be appealing her decision if it goes against them. Uh, and I think it will. And I don't see any reason why the judge would apply attorney client privilege to these emails on the SEC's behalf. So going forward, uh, I do believe they're going to lose and lose again and again and again. And they're going to go ahead and appeal that up to the next judge. And they're most likely going to lose that one as well. At some point, the judge is going to have to say, all right, we've had enough of this. You're going to turn those emails over. That's the end of it. And they're going to most likely agree to settle at that point. That's at least what I'm hoping for. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a lawyer. Don't take my word for it. Just follow the case along with me. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick update today on the state of the market and the XRP SEC lawsuit that's moving at a snail's pace right now. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I do appreciate it. You guys have a great night.